Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to compare serialization versus word externalization. In the previous video, we have seen implementation of serialization. We have seen implementation of externalization. In this video, we are going to compare both of them. And also, we are going to see some serialization vulnerabilities and see why it is very hazardous to implement serialization in our application and how to prevent the serialization vulnerabilities in this video. So, let's get started. In the previous video, we have implemented serialization, externalization, and we know that we will be using serialization when we don't want to control which field is going to be get serialized. And we will use externalization when there are many fields which are sensitive, which are not to be externalized or serialized. And B, the programmer needs the responsibility and control over which field is going to be serialized and which is not. So for that, we have used externalization. Now, let's compare quickly both of them. So, serialization always uses serializable interface while externalization uses externalizable interface. Now, which one is the marker interface? Serializable or externalizable? So, serializable was a marker interface. The task was with the JVM to convert all of the fields which are not marked as transient to make it serializable and store it in a file or transfer it to a network and store somewhere. While in the case of externalizable, this interface cannot be a marker interface. Why? Because we need the control to define which, which fields are to be serialized and deserialized. Thus, it has two methods, the write external and read external. Write external tells us which particular fields you want to serialize and write to a file or to some place through a network. And read external is the method where we are going to describe which fields are to be deserialized and added to which particular field. So here we have implemented both write external and read external. Here we have given the two fields which are to be externalized and saved to the file and two fields which are to be deserialized from the given file into the current object. And these are the fields in which the values are going to be written. Now what controls the serialization? So we know that JVM is the one who is responsible for the complete serialization. We do not have any kind of control over how and what is to be serialized except it just gives you the transient keyword to prevent serialization of that particular field. So serializable interface passes the responsibility of serialization to JVM completely and programmer technically has no control over serialization and it is going to use a default algorithm. And the default algorithm uses read object and write object, while it uses read external and write external methods. Now, in externalizable, the control and responsibility of serialization comes to the programmer, and hence JVM has no control over what is to serialize and what not to. It will not even look at trans transient keyword if you have implemented externalizable interface. Next, performance. So, serialization has a very bad performance, while in the case of externalization, it has better performance. You can control the performance using which fields are to be serialized and what not. Here, everything is going to be serialized, except the transient ones. Now, no argument constructor required. So, basically, serialization, everything is done with the JVM. It does not require any kind of no argument constructor. But in externalizable, a public no argument constructor is required while using externalizable interface. Here, if you can see, there is no constructor that you have used. So, by default, JVM provides you the no argument constructor. Now, here, if I provide one or two argument constructor, then externalization will fail here. Let me give you a demo quickly. Now, here I have generated a constructor with two fields, name and ID. Now, if I try to externalize it, now single constructor is gone. So, I am going to pass one as the ID and code decode name here in the Constructor itself. We don't need setters, right? Now let's try to run it. It will give you an exception. Got an exception. Employee no valid constructor is found. What valid constructor it requires? New argument constructor is required. So here if you add one no argument constructor by deselecting everything. So this is the new argument constructor. Now, if you try to run it, it will run successfully. Great. So, it is run and it is able to decode and deserialize properly. So, this is how we prove that no argument public constructor is required while you are using externalization. Incorporate changes with ease. It is hard to analyze and modify class structure because any change may break the serialization. 
while it is relatively easy to analyze and modify the structure because a complete control over serialization goes in our programmer's hand now transient yes transient plays a very important role here in when you are going to implement serializable while in externalizable interface when you are implementing transient keyword won't play any role even if you don't implement transient keyword on any of the variable so here if i don't want to serialize name what i have to do is just remove it from write and read that means you are not going to serialize your name field so you don't have to write transient here it doesn't play any role now partial saving of object is possible using serialization we save the total object and it is not possible to save the part of the object while in case of externalization yes we can either save the total object or the part of the object which is to be saved is going to be in your hands now let's quickly come to what is java deserialization vulnerability so this was the file that was created after serialization if i open it you can see this is code decode which is serialized here now what does this particular vulnerability says a java deserialization vulnerability is a security vulnerability that occurs when a malicious user or a hacker tries to insert a modified object into the system and compromise the system or the data so if you can see here this this file is open to me so what i can do here is i can go to notepad plus plus I can use a plug plugin of view in hex editor and open my file. This is the file that I opened, and I'm going to use the hex editor. So here I can see any hex editor can open your serialized file. Now what I can do is I can be a malicious user or a hacker and modify the serialized object. So here I can see the code decode is written. Now I want to add my own code here. So what I will do is. I can copy this 44 and I can modify it. I can say this is also 43. I can say this also is 43 and I'll make every single byte in this byte stream as 43. Now my code decode with the C capital is converted into all Cs. Now if I save and close it. So now I being the malicious user, I have modified my serialized object to compromise the system. Now, since you know that a serialized object in Java is a byte array with a state information, if you can see here a byte array with some information. If you look at the stored serialized object with a hex editor, so here in the Notepad plus plus, I have used hex editor to view the file in the hex mode. In that case, you can easily view your information and you can also manipulate the information quickly. in front of you have quickly manipulated all the code decode attributes to capital c now if you try to deserialize it what will happen so let's quickly see and let's try to deserialize it so in the main file i'm going to comment all the serialization process and i'm going to just deserialize it and if i try to run it the serialization demo the code decode file you can see that the file that we have used for the serialization there i have written code decode with c capital now what i have deserialized is all the cs so thus if our application accepts the serialization object and deserialize it it is relatively very easy to tamper with the values by altering the serialized object we can create invalid object and alter the data as integrator or even worse your system will be completely compromised if in case you have serialized your passwords they can be changed if you have serialized some pin numbers or anything that can be changed or even viewed using the hex editor it is so easy to read the serialized bytes with the hex editor anybody can easily modify it in very few seconds so this is the java deserialization vulnerability when you have written code decode with capital c but when you deserialize that this is what you got and this is how we have modified using the hex editor here so this is why it's always said serialization and deserialization is a very dangerous thing and has to be implemented very judiciously only when it is really required now how do you prevent the deserialization vulnerability Initially the very first thing i would always suggest that until unless it is not necessary please do not use serialization in your projects the best way to prevent the deserialization is to prevent the serialization overall if your application do not accept the serialization it can't hurt you 
So stop deserializing your serialized objects at all. However, if you really need to implement a serializable interface due to inheritance or any reason, you can override the read object and prevent the deserialization. So what I can do here is while during deserialization, you can either override the read external or read object. If you are implementing the externalizable, then override the read external. If you are implementing serialization, override the read object method. And here you can throw new not serializable exception. Say this application does not allow deserialization of serialized objects. So if it's really necessary to serialize or externalize your application, do not allow deserialization and do not accept any kind of files which are serialized. So now if you try to deserialize it, let's see what happens. And it says this app does not allow deserialization of serialized objects. So you have successfully serialized your object and given that serialized file that is code decode file to somebody to deserialize it. But in your application, you should not accept the serialized file and do, should not deserialize it. If you deserialized it, somebody hackers might compromise your system. So this is how you can allow the deserialization. So first of all, do not do serialization, deserialization at all. If it is really necessary, do not allow deserialization. Just do the serialization and give that file to anybody who wants it. Third, do not accept the serialized object from untrusted sources. That means I have created this file here. So this can be accessed with the FTP remote location also. So what you can do is you can prevent any unauthorized access by granting some permissions to this file. That you can only read this file. That you can only view this file. You cannot modify this file unless you are not an authorized person. If you are an authorized person, you have to give your ID password to firstly access this location. Secondly, view or modify those permissions. So you can always do authorization based granting the permissions to that particular secured location, the FTP location. So lastly, do not store password and such type sensitive information to serialization who are prone to vulnerabilities. So in this application, I'm just saving the name. So even if hacker hacks it and change your name, how, how bad will it go in your system? So do not always serialize any of the sensitive information. Only serialize those information which even if tampered by the hacker or the malicious user will not harm your system's integrity. So these are the things that you have to remember while deserialize. Now I also have many more things, other inheritance rules which can apply on serialization and deserialization of parent and child. That means if parent is serializable, will child be serializable by default? If child is serializable, what will happen to the parent who is not serialized? So these are some cases that we will need to cover. If you need me to cover this, just let me know in the comment section. I'll create another video of this. Thank you.